Many comic book collectors and historians believe the golden age of comics began with the first appearance of Superman, cover dated June 1938. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at all the comics on the newsstand with a cover date of June 1938 and start a monthly series where we're going to analyze the rarity of these books and their collectible value in all conditions. So starting with month number one, June 1938, we see that there were 18 different comics on the newsstands with that cover date. Various publishers, by far the most valuable, important comic of the month is Action Comics number one. It is the fourth series from DC being published at the moment. And it's their latest series. Looking at the CGC census for graded copies, we will see there is 63 copies. This is by far way higher than any other comic from that month. Now, we can learn two possible th theories from this. Either it is by far the most common book, or the high price tag has driven more copies out to be graded because there's more profit to be made. That is the case with this book. By far, we can see by looking at the Overstreet price guide values that a low-grade copy graded 2.0 is worth $170,000. This is way higher than any other comic book from the same month. We could generally speak and say that these comics are all roughly the same rarity. But the high demand and historical importance of the first appearance of Superman has driven the price way higher than any of the other books. So let's go through the list here and just analyze this a little bit closer. First of all, let's look for the newer titles. We will see that five titles debuted in 1938 that were being published this particular month out of the 18 titles. That means 13 of the titles had been published at least since the year before, if not longer. If we look at the CGC census, we will see that Action Comics number one has a total of 63 copies graded in total, in th three of them, in fact, even grade 9.0 or higher. These are true high-grade copies. This includes raw and er, universal and restored copies. What I wanted to do is get an, an idea of how many copies really are actually out there. Looking at high-grade books in general, Crackerjack Funnies, number one from Western, also came out this month. There are four high-grade copies. This is the highest of any comic released that month. And in fact, there is a 9.8 graded copy of this book. That is the only issue this month that has a copy grading that high. We'll see that Action Comics, number one, has three high-grade copies. Circus, number one has two high-grade copies. Mickey Mouse Magazine has three high-grade copies. And there's one high-grade copy each of Detective Comics 16 and New Adventure Comics 27. Note how many of the other comics have zero high-grade copies. Now, we don't know for certain that no copies exist, but the CG census has been around for over 15 years, and usually key books, rare books, and valuable books will get graded to some point. So if they are out there, the odds are that they would have had at least one copy graded by now, but that is just not the case here. And if we look at the grading of all copies, low and high grade combined, we'll find that even four out of the 18 cop comics on the list have zero copies graded. So Let's see what those titles are. Feature Funnies, number 9. Popular Comics, number 29. The Funnies, number 21. And Tip Top Comics, number 26. Now, none of these four feature superheroes. You could say that none of these are major key books. Therefore, there's no high demand for these books to get graded. But the simple fact is, even in low grade, and even with their price tag value, there is not a single copy graded, low grade, mid grade, or high grade of these books. These books are extremely rare in general. And I challenge you to go out and find a copy. These books are not impossible to find. But again, we're talking about comics from 1938. They just were not saved. They were destroyed over the decades. And it took decades before people realized that these books had any value. Now these comics are 80 years old. 
What else do we learn from studying this chart? Well, yes, Action Comics number one is by far the most valuable comic on the list in all grades. Is there anything else that does grade high? Well, the other DC titles, Detective Comics 16 and New Adventure Comics 27, both have a high price tag of $1,200 in low grade and a hefty $12,000 in near mint. These are both DC books, and they both feature an ad for Action Comics number one. What's interesting is DC had a fourth title out that month, More Fun Comics number 32. It also features an ad for Action Comics number one, and yet for some reason, the price tag of this book has not caught up. This may be due to the fact that on the CGC census, it appears to be way more common. Therefore, it only has a $207 price in low grade, $3,100 in near mint. That's quite a drastic price difference, though. What else do we learn from this chart? Well, we see some of the books actually have very low price tags. Famous Funnies number 47 from Eastern Color and Tip Top Comics number 26 from United Features both have a price guide value of $39 in low grade and are both in the $520 range mark for near mint. That makes these the cheapest and most affordable books to collect from this particular month. Quite affordable for sure, considering that there are comics that are being published this year that have higher price tags almost instantly than these 80-year-old comics have. What else do we learn? This is the first month of the Golden Age of Comics, yet over 300 monthly comics had already been released prior to this month. Some people will call that the end of the Platinum Age. We could debate that it is early or proto-Golden Age, as the first comic books in the modern format started in 1933. So by the time Action Comics number one comes out, we've had this modern comic book format for already five years or half a decade. What else do we learn? Eastern Color, famous Funnies number 47, was the oldest and longest running comic series at this time. This may be one of the reasons why it has the lowest price tag value of any books, because collectors do usually seek out number one issues, or earlier issues usually do have higher values in general. We're going to continue this series each month to go through and learn the entire history of the Golden Age of Comic Books and do an analysis of this. We hope this will be quite intriguing as we learn about the rarity, the history, and the value of all of these early Golden Age books.